and let us all that we can to build a better future. Daniel, you got a story for the people. Tell us about these wonderful actors and who are they? Yeah, so this is both sides of the Democratic Party have decided to just go, yeah, we did that. We brought justice. Look at how good we are. Aren't we amazing? Look, Kamala Harris, she's black. She can speak for... This is literally the state of the Democratic Party that we're in right now. So, President Joe Biden said Tuesday that the conviction of the former Minneapolis police officer Derek, uh, Derek Chauvin in the killing of George Floyd it can be a giant step forward. Again, another thing that Joe Biden can use in his advantage for the nation in its fight against systemic racism. Systemic racism, which Joe Biden put into practice and led with the uh, crime bill he helped push along with a whole number of other things while he was yeah but he declared that it's not enough he must i would love to, for uh, joe biden to go we must undo the bills that i put together that are contributing to much of this anyway joe biden spoke from the white house hours after the verdict alongside vice president kamala harris with the pair saying the country's work is far from finished with the verdict as they just drank like iced tea or something we can't stop here, said Biden, after not starting anything to begin with. And I think that they lay, say later in here, but I think he only talked to Floyd's family like the day before the trial. But remember, we saw that thing that we did a story a while back, like a week ago, and he's like, I haven't talked to the family yet. It's been a year. I haven't talked half a year. I haven't talked to them. Biden and Harris called for, on Congress to act swiftly to address uh, police uh, policing reform, which, of course, is going to get through and not just empty words that they're not even going to try and pass themselves, including by approving a bill named for Floyd, who died uh, with his neck under Chauvin's knee last month. Beyond that, the president said that the entire country must confront hatred to uh, change hearts and minds as well as laws and policies. I can't breathe. Those were George Floyd's last words, Biden said. We can't let those words die with him. We have to keep hearing those words. We must not turn away. We can't turn away after turning away until the last week or so. And then here we go. Harris, the first black woman to serve as vice president. I'm pleased that they didn't say African-American. I've seen a lot of people do that, and it's just interesting said racism was keeping the country from fulfilling its promise, uh, founding the promise of liberty and justice for all, such as, I don't know, uh, laughing while parents of kids who weren't in school go to jail because of a law you did, or hiding uh, death row inmates, uh, the evidence that would exonerate a death row inmate, you know, things of that nature. Or use it at keeping uh, prisoners uh, behind uh, bars even longer so they could still serve as the uh, uh, firefighters uh, when the California fires were raging. And, you know, it was under her term where, again, like, again, now, thankfully, these prisoners can become firefighters, but for a long time, they couldn't. And, again, it's just, uh, it's it's rather um, insulting uh, that we're seeing, again, Joe Biden, who's the architect of the crime bill. Again, yeah, what, what, the architects yeah. of their own version. Yes. These are law and order people that are pretending that they had something to do with something they had nothing to do with. And if anything... They stopped from happening or made it very hard for this to happen. Yeah. And now they're taking credit for something they had nothing to do with. Yeah. And, and the thing is, too, uh, you know, we have to remember that this isn't over, that there's going to be still numerous other videos that are going to surface showing police brutality and police corruption and an escalation of force. You know, so, uh, yeah. All right. Biden and Harris, you can uh, pat yourselves on the back, but it's not over yet. You're living in a fantasy world if you think that it's over because the people still demand justice. We still have corrupted law officials. We still have corrupted uh, officials in, at the state level and at the federal level. And politicians like Biden and Harris, again, to Daniel's point, who are architects of their own versions of the crime bill or either that abusing their own power to make, make sure that the prison industrial complex and police can basically run unchecked, you know— the, the, what are you celebrating for? It's not over yet. Are you going to bring in actually any real legislation that's going to challenge these powers that be? Are you actually going to do something about ending the war on drugs? Because one thing that's kind of fueling all this corruption, all this abuse of power, is this ridiculous war on drugs that also helps fuel the prison industrial complex. Are you going to do something about that, President Biden, Vice President Harris? It would be good if you did. And if they did, we would we would acknowledge it. We would say, all right, great. It's not over yet. 
And you guys help contribute to this system that we're in. It's just not only Republican lawmakers. It's very easy to go after Republican lawmakers and Republican presidential administrations. But the Democrats also play a role too. And to ignore that is going to make sure that if, if we ignore that or ignore what the Democrats have contributed to this system that we have, nothing will fundamentally change, which is why it's up to the people to step up. And then there are people, of course, that are going to try and uh, twist what's happening. And they're going to go, oh, but what about this crime over here? Or what about this crime over here that has nothing to do with this? And we already have seen, I've been watching, uh, when I was watching the live stream, I was looking at a lot of the comments and uh, these vi the video when, the, the, when it happened. And it's like, all of a sudden now the new argument is, well, Maxine Waters threatened the jurors who were sequestered and had no idea what was going on outside of what they were doing. And uh, that's why... They voted this way. It's the truth is that uh, there are some real bastards who are going to never take this stuff seriously and to take the fact that the U.S. police force is a mob in and of itself and it's organized in such a way that it allows people to shoot kids, shoot adults, and get away with it at a rate that would never be acceptable if you inverted the situation. And we just got to deal with those people who are going to try and diminish this as much as we need to try and diminish the people like Nancy, like everyone else that's trying to take credit for something that was the responsibility of thousands of organizers fighting and marching and protesting for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And it's those people... We talk a lot on the show about how one protest doesn't mean anything. It took this much to get this effect. Whereas, again, if if any of these situations had been flipped, there would have there would have been there. We know what would have happened, and that the double standard still exists in many people's minds. Yeah, we gotta fight for a better future, and it's up to the people. Don't rely on politicians to be leaders. Don't hear or worship politicians, and even if there's somebody you respect. You got to hold them accountable, okay? It doesn't matter who they are or what party, party they're with. You, you, you got to hold them accountable. And the thing is we really have to hold President Biden accountable because, again, he is the architect of the crime bill, and its legacy continues to live on.